Hey guys, this is Rudy coming at you live from Palm Beach in Florida. It is, uh, what day is it today? It is Saturday, September the 9th. About a week ago, I made, I made a video about uh, a number of different REITs, real estate income or real estate investment trusts that you can invest in. And uh, I thought I'll go a little bit deeper on one of them, which is AGNC. I'm not going to spend an overwhelming amount of time uh, on AGNC because much of the information I'm going to share with you are um, facts and, and uh, info you can obviously extract yourself from the internet. But I do want to sort of do a fly over here and maybe go a little deeper on AGNC. Uh, I have been buying some AGNC. I think the uh, current price at around 10 bucks is a sweet deal. Um, but anyway, uh, let me take you into this and, and sort of walk you through my thoughts and uh, share some information about this. So AGNC is a real estate investment trust, so an REIT or a REIT. It's a small cap value with a market cap of around $6 billion. Uh, obviously, small cap in terms of REITs, but not that small. Um, it, when they say small cap, they, they are referring to the financial services industry, where many of the companies are multi-billion dollar corporations like banks and REITs are financial institutions as well, rather than real estate investments per se, even though their primary investment is in real estate. As I said, you can buy it for around $10. I have been buying some AGNC. Um, in a situation like this, I don't, I don't jump in boots and all. Uh, you know, I might take a small position, see which way it goes. If it pulls back, I might buy a little bit more. If it goes up, I'll just hold. Um, so uh, that's where I am right now. One of the reasons why it's attractive to me right now is because the uh, economy and the market uh, is not doing that great in general, pretty much regardless of where you are. And this particular investment pays a nice juicy dividend of uh, $1.44 per share, which at its current uh, stock price of around $10 is yielding almost 15%. It's sitting sort of in the middle of its 52-week range, so uh, arguably uh, it's nicely priced. Of course, this whole thing can collapse uh, pretty much like the uh, U.S. economy could collapse. Um, you know, a lot of people are hiding uh, cash away in treasury bills because it's paying you know five and a half percent or something. Um, it, that could or could not be a bad thing. At the end of the day, if the whole house of cards tumbles, then uh, the treasury bills tumbles with it. Commercial real estate and residential mortgages and everything else collapses along with it. So uh, in, if that uh, is sort of the worst case scenario, then you're in an environment where, where doom and gloom prevails and uh, you kind of have a, a reset or repeat of 2008 when pretty much everything collapsed. The uh, AGNC has grossly underperformed the indices over the past few months or so, especially this year. Uh, over the last one year, uh, we've seen some of the um, stock market uh, indices trading better and uh, recovering a little bit while um, the REITs have pretty much collapsed and the REITs are sort of indicative of the commercial real estate in general. And uh, some of them like AGNC are also in general mortgage real estate. So uh, uh, asset backed commercial paper or mortgage backed securities is not a good place to be right now, but the REITs are cheap and the yields are high. So uh, let's take a look further. Um, you can see right at the bottom in the center of the screen, the short interest is quite high on this as well. Um, you know, when you, when you have about 4%, 5% of the outstanding float being sold short, a lot of people are expecting it to go down even more. So this dividend yield has been uh, very high. It's been consistently high for many, many years. In fact, except for a couple of short periods, it's been in double digit space probably for the last 10, 12 years. Now, the thing to remember here is that the dividend is really uh, a dollar dividend, right? So when I say it's dollar forty-four. When you express it as a percentage of the current stock price, it's 15%. But at the end of the day, it's $1.44. Uh, in this particular example here, it's 12 cents. It's paid on a monthly basis. So it's 12 cents per, per share per month. Uh, and the 12 cents is kind of relatively fixed. Uh, I hesitate saying that because obviously they can cut the dividend at any time. They have cut it before. But at the end of the day, if the yield is too high, so like 15%, they could cut the dividend to like, let's say 10%, uh, 10 cents or so, which means then uh, instead of yielding 15%, it's yielding 10% because then it'd be 10 cents on a $10 stock, right? So it's not that percentage, the percentage can, can go up and down as the stock price goes up, uh, goes up and down. Uh, but the um, dollar value, 12 cents per share is relatively fixed, okay? I mean, they can cut that too, but it is expressed as a percentage, 15% is very high. Uh, but at the end of the day, if the stock price for AGNC goes back up to $15 per share from where it currently is at $10, uh, 
then the uh, dividend yield, which is effectively a dollar forty-four, will only be ten percent and not fifteen percent, and so on. Right. So the um, the the uh, dollar value is the is the actual uh, dividend that you're receiving, which is twelve cents per share. Um, the stock price is going up and down, and that's why the percentage is so high. Um, if the stock price were to go down, obviously this uh, dividend, if it stays at 12 cents, is going up, right? And conversely, if the stock price goes higher, then the dividend uh, in a, in percentage terms is going lower. So here you can kind of see sort of how it's moved and uh, what it's done over the past year or so. And this particular graph I'm showing you for you here from Y charts actually shows you over 10 years what has happened to the dividend, um, sort of low points, high points, et cetera. You can kind of see where it's going. Uh, who's buying and selling or who owns um, uh, AGNC? So uh, you can see in general, uh, there are a couple of red ones here, Northern Trust right at the bottom and BlackRock has sold a little bit, only 2%. Uh, the rest of them have been adding to their positions in terms of institutional holders, right? So institutional investors currently own approximately 43%, 42% of the outstanding shares in AGNC. And the bulk of that is mutual funds or otherwise other institutional holders. Um, effectively, there have been net purchases. So uh, it's kind of a safe haven, right? Uh, I know that there are a number of stocks that have been doing well, but the, the majority of stocks are not doing well. Uh, they're kind of just trading water. So uh, putting your money into a high yielding uh, investment like AGNC is not a bad place to hide some cash. But as I said at the start, we don't want to jump in boots and all. Um, what does Zach say? So AGNC Investment currently has an average broker recommendation of 1.75 on a scale of one to five. One is a strong buy and five is a strong sell. So it's kind of trading more towards the uh, the strong buy. And of eight analyst analysts who are cover, covering it currently, four are saying it's a strong buy and two are saying it's a buy. Um, nobody is really saying sell it. So if you look at that on a graph right now, uh, you have eight analysts covering it and uh, four of them are strong buy. Uh, two of them are saying buy and two of them are saying hold. No one's saying sell it or it's a strong sell. So um, if you uh, put your faith in the analysts, <laughs> which is always dangerous to do, the majority of them are saying it's either a strong buy or a buy right now. If you look at the price performance, it's been horrible over the last, uh, you know, whatever period you want to choose. And if you uh, look at the actual graph going back five years or so, uh, AGNC hit a high before the pandemic of almost 20 bucks and now it's trading at around $10. If you timed it well, you could have bought it during the pandemic for around $6 or so. Uh, the short interest I talked about a minute ago, um, you know, so these are just things that you want to be aware of in terms of where, where AGNC is and how it's trading. Um, let's take a look here at the fundamentals. So we're looking at the balance sheet. This is on a quarterly basis. Uh, you can see that the cash and short-term investments have uh, dipped down over the last um, couple of quarters or so. The total debt has also dipped down a little bit. The equity has remained pretty much solid, right? So the balance sheet is uh, uh, simple math, right? Your assets have to equal your debt plus your equity. And uh, we have a small change in cash and cash equivalents here, which is assets, and a small change in debt. Uh, but the equities have pretty much remained, the total equity for the shareholders pretty much remained flat. If you look at the same graph on an annual basis, you can see that the cash and short-term equivalents are sort of flat uh, or flattish, and the uh, debt has been declining. That's, just, that's a good thing. Because the debt has been declining, the equity has been declining because the uh, cash and cash equivalents on the other side of the ledger has remained pretty solid over the last few years or so. If you look at the income statement, we're looking at the quarterly income statement here. You can see the total revenue has been increasing, operating income slightly up, the total net income slightly up. It's not too bad annually. If you look at it on an annual basis, the uh, total revenue is down. This is the income statement I'm looking at, not the balance sheet. In the income statement shows you that the uh, total revenue is down, the total operating income is down, and the net income is down. And the reason for that is because of the uh, inverted yields this is uh, suppressing the price of AGNC from a stock price point of view and also uh, squeezing their margins, right? So um, here we're looking at a couple of slides I'm showing you here because the earnings of AGNC are not available. We need to look at the price to book and the price to sales. The so price to sales on a trading 12-month basis, TTM trading 12 months, uh, pretty much in line with the industry, 3.6 to 3.6. And the most recent uh, 
quarter price to books or MRQ's most recent quarter, pretty much in line with the industry too, sort of just below one. The industry also just below one. We're talking about the uh, peers here who are also the other REITs. Although profitable on a gross basis, AGNC has inline profitability in the mortgage real estate investment trust industry. It's operating at net margins are in line with in industry medians. It's sort of there or there about. From a gross profit margin point of view, AGNC is lagging just slightly. From an operating profit margin point of view for the trading 12 months, in uh, AGNC is outperforming the industry handsomely, but the industry has been sucking. So that's why AGNC has actually been sort of okay. Uh, net profit margins similarly, 1.87 so almost to the industry negative almost 17 percent so uh, even though it's in line it's actually outperforming the industry it's doing a little bit better so if you are interested in investing in a REIT maybe AGNC is one of your better potential investments from a dividend point of view obviously the dividend is huge but I'm saying here don't get fooled by the percentage right the percentage is an expression of the uh, dollar value so which is 12 cents per share expressed as a um, percentage on the stock price, which is below $10. So 12 or 14 cents or whatever expressed as a on a stock price of about $10 or so is obviously 15%. And that's why it looks so incredibly good. The dividend change, the IGNC, like pretty much any other REIT, can uh, move its dividends anytime it wants to. And on a dividend growth rate uh, over the past three years or so, AGNC and the industry pretty much neck on neck, neck and neck there in terms of uh, what they were doing. A growth rate, from a growth rate analysis point of view, AGNC has failed to keep pace with growth in revenues. Um, if you look at the earnings per share growth of a 12, trading 12 month basis, it significantly outperforms the industry, which is uh, lagging at negative 38%, AGNC 86% is positive, it's pretty good. Right at the bottom, you can look at the revenue growth, not bad at all, the industry has been growing at 60% in revenue, AGNC 335% positive over the last uh, couple of years or so. AGNC has a debt to capital ratio of 84%. This is not unusual for a REIT because obviously it's mortgage backed real estate, right? So it's a mortgage real estate investment trust. So it's an, a REIT specifically linked to mortgages. So obviously it's mortgages are gonna be high or the debt to capital ratio is gonna be high. You've got a debt to capital ratio here of 84. The industry is almost at 80. So it's sort of there or thereabouts. The change in debt is insignificant, it's irrelevant. The interest coverage is also kind of like interesting because we're talking about the spread between the mortgage uh, rate that they can buy for and what they can sell for, right? So AGNC Investment is an internally managed real estate investment trust. The company provides private capital to the United States housing market. In the United States, if you buy a house and your mortgage is unwritten by you know, JP Morgan Chase or, or uh, HSBC Bank or whatever, uh, within weeks or months after the the, uh, the deal is executed and you close on the property, that mortgage has been sold and bundled. And uh, that's how REITs make their money on the spread. If you look at AGNC here, I'm comparing it to a couple of its peers, Annaly, Ready Capital, et cetera. Uh, the dividend obviously for AGNC is, is phenomenal. It's really, really good. The stock price, absolutely horrible. So if you're looking at the stock price, you don't want to be looking at the stock price because it makes your portfolio look bad. Uh, but if you uh, sock some money away in AGNC, you can at least earn that very nice, healthy dividend. But look at Ready Capital here, not bad at all. You know, it pays a dividend of almost um, 10. And uh, the PE ratio right now is only four, right? So Ready Capital might be even more interesting than AGNC. But as I said, I've already parked some money into AGNC. So let's unpack this just for a second here. This is AGNC's website. And there's a whole paragraph here that has three hyperlinks. So REIT, uh, they're defining the REIT for you. Agency MBS, we can look at that and repurchase agreements. How is it that they are making their money? So let's unpack that quickly. A real estate investment trust is a company that owns or finances real estate, mortgage REIT, investing mortgages or mortgage-backed securities relative, related to residential or commercial properties. To, relative, to qualify as a REIT, a company must. Now, I chopped it off here because I wanted to put all three of these on one page. But if you want to see what the um, determinants are for them to be a REIT, for agency to qualify as a REIT, then just go to their website and click on that little hyperlink that says REIT, and you can read it for yourself. What is agency MBS? So mortgage-backed securities, MBS, mortgage-backed securities, issued by a government-sponsored enterprise, GSE, such as the Federal National Mortgage Association. So some of you guys might have heard of Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. You know, these are federal agencies in the United States that basically underwrite all this massive toxic pool of uh, mortgage-backed securities known as asset-backed commercial paper or mortgage-backed securities, right? 
uh, with <laughs> underwritten by the might and power of the almighty dollar, which used to be backed with gold. And now if you look at the back of a dollar note, it says, in God we trust. So uh, there's been a significant sea change there in terms of where you put your faith, uh, regardless of, of, of your preference there. The fact of the matter is, um, you know, if, if the whole house of card collapses like it did in 2008, as I said at the start, everything goes, including government asset back commercial paper. Anyway, uh, a couple of these companies need, needed a bailout themselves. And there are a, a few people that might be familiar to you, like Bill Ackman from Pershing, who uh, actually bailed out or actually took a position in Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac or whatever. People like Berkshire Hathaway, Warren Buffett, uh, you know, put up some money to prop these things up when they collapse, uh, you know, because they come and go pretty much the same as everything else. So these guys, Freddie Mac, Fannie Mae, et cetera, uh, provide principal and interest payments that are guaranteed by the issuing entity. So uh, uh, agencies, uh, commercial backed paper or mortgage backed paper is basically underwritten and secured by the federal government of the United States. If you trust the government, <laughs> you probably trust agency. I don't trust anybody. So that's why I'm laughing, right? A repurchase agreement. What is that? So like uh, the, th the, th the third hyperlink there, the repurchase agreement. What is that thing there? A type of secured loan, typically short term. Under repurchase agreement transactions, one party sells a security to another party at a specific price and simultaneously agrees to buy back that same asset at a future date at a predetermined higher price. The difference between the two prices effectively constitutes. So basically what they're doing here is they're trading on the spread, right? They buy a whole lot of toxic assets, bundle them all together, sell them to someone else and uh, keep some profit on the spread. So AGNC is an internally managed mortgage real estate investment trust, a REIT. It invests predominantly in AG, agency mortgage-backed securities. So I just covered that, agency MBS mortgage-backed securities on a leverage basis financed primarily through collateralized borrow, borrowing structured as repurchase agreements. Sounds like a mouthful. It's actually really simple. As, as I said, they're just buying a whole lot of uh, investment instruments, uh, securities, mortgage-backed securities, bundling them all and selling them to some other victim, right? That's how they make their money. The principal investment objective that provides stockholders with favorable long-term returns, that's for sure, on a risk-adjusted basis, Okay through attractively monthly dividends. And well, as long as they keep paying an attractively monthly dividend, I'll park some of my cash awaiting investment in AGNC, for now anyway. Generates income from interest earned on the investment assets, net of associated borrowing and hedging costs, and the net realized gains and losses on the investments and hedging portfolios. Active portfolio management, right? So to preserve the net asset value, which is their job, that's what they gotta do. So um, that sort of in a nutshell, I know, <laughs> probably going at 100 miles per hour, right? But that is sort of AGNC. Um, would I put all my money into uh, AGNC as a REIT, uh, earning me a, a nice yield of 15%? Uh, no way. Would I put some money in it? You bet. So uh, I already did. In the past week, I bought some uh, AGNC for just under $10. So uh, currently it's trading at about uh, you know $9.70. I think my cost base is around that same price as of $9.69 or thereabouts. Um, I'll just hold some of my uh, cash awaiting investment in a REIT. And uh, for as long as they give me 12 cents for every single share that I own in AGNC, I'm probably going to be happy. If they cut that yield to like 10 cents and it becomes like a 10% dividend, I'll probably still be relatively happy. It's pre-tax, 10%, not bad. you know. So uh, I'd rather have that than... Uh, for instance, a treasury bill or something like that pays five and a half percent. And maybe your first call on that is like in March of next year, which is like six months away or whatever. So, um, you know, uh, there's a lot to be said for some diversification. Uh, you don't need to over diversify, uh, but you do want to have some cash maybe right now because the market is uh, so unpredictable. Uh, you may want to have a little bit more cash than usual. Uh, park a little bit of money into some high yielding uh, assets, you know, like an AGNC for an exa uh, by way of an example. Uh, you can get burned on those ones too, like we did on uh, ICANN when uh, it crashed, you know, so, uh, and that was recent, just a few months ago. So ICANN, <clears throat> excuse me, was also uh, offering a nice yield. And of course, then uh, ICANN crashed and then they cut the dividend, and you know, so these things happen, right? And then there are a number of uh, high yielding stocks that you can invest in as well, which are not, not too bad. So you can diversify a little bit, you know, 
Uh, always view your cash as cash awaiting investment. Don't sit on too much cash for too long, but it's uh, right now, cash is not a bad place to hide in, uh, hide away in for a while while you look for your next good investment. In the uh, next video I'm going to make, I'm going to tell you why I uh, made a mistake selling Petrobras when I did. In fact, it's probably my most significant mistake that I've made so far this year. Uh, now, you could argue on one hand, uh, you don't, uh, you know, nobody gets poor when you take profit. And when I sold Petrobras, I did take profit, but man, my timing wasn't good. So I'll make that video next and uh, talk a little bit about Petrobras. But for now, this is Rudy saying uh, thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.